Hi guys, this is Lucky with Lucky Sevens Tarot. Thank you guys so much for tuning into my channel. I have a very different video for you today and it is highly, highly requested. This might be one of my most asked questions um, that I get from a lot of my subscribers and just people in general when they find out what I do for a living. All right. Uh, if you don't know and you're new to my channel, I am not just a tarot reader. I'm an astrologer. I'm a cardologist and I've been studying these um, esoteric uh, tools and divination tools for well over a decade. Um, so I'm pretty versed in all things divination. <laughs> okay. Um, but one of the main questions that I get asked all the time is when will I find love? And when is a good time for me to find love? You know, for those of you wanting love to come in, wanting to open yourself up to a new relationship, not wanting to, you know, wanting to weed through like the BS. Okay. Now, the other thing that this video will be good for is if you're in a relationship, this video will really be good for telling you if you're dealing with any sort of rocky energy in your relationship, insecurity or instability, uh, this may give you some insight as to why. And this is not zodiac sign specific, guys. In cardiology, what makes it so accurate uh, is that it's your birthday specific, you know, um, and the energies play out no matter what. Uh, it just depends on how they're playing out specifically in your life, but the energy is the energy. So uh, we're going to sort of go over this and I'm going to explain to you um, the best and worst times to get into relationships, best and worst times to get married. Um, and it doesn't just mean love relationships, guys. You can use this as a rule of thumb uh, also for business partnerships, um, friendships, things of that nature as well. All right. So this is definitely some significant, a, a little gem that I am dropping on you today. And hopefully it will give you a better understanding and like a somewhat of a rule book to go by of um, kind of rule of thumb. All right. And it's general. In the sense that, you know, the cards that are in these periods that are specific to you and your birthday um, may change the situation a little bit. But at the end of the day, the energy always plays out. And one thing that I go by, I literally live by it, is my cards are never wrong. I trust them more than I trust myself. <laughs> like, it is. It is insane how absolutely accurate these cards are. I was literally just having a conversation with a friend of mine and we were catching up and I was being nosy, which I do sometimes when my friends will not tell me their business. I will look at their business in cardiology and tell them their business. Um, and so I was doing that with a friend of mine and he was floored at the information that I was able to provide him and I know nothing about what what's actually like going on and he wouldn't elaborate and tell me what like how detailed it was but he was just like mouth gaped open and just like oh my gosh I can't believe that this is so like so detailed Okay, so, but that's what cardiology is. It's it's very different in a lot of senses um, than tarot. And it's more in alignment with astrology uh, or numerology than it is tarot. Um, but like I said, it's, it's absolutely the most hands down accurate divination system I've ever encountered. Okay. Uh, and that includes astrology. So let's get into this, guys, and see how I can, 
you know, what information I can give you that may be helpful for you in your relationships uh, moving forward. All right, let's do it. Okay, guys. So we have, we go through seven cycles uh, each year. Okay. And the cycles that we go through, they're, they're periods of time that last 52 days for each period, okay? And it starts on our birthday. So in cardiology, it's your personal year. It's like your birthday is your new year. And so your new year starts on your birthday, and then obviously your year will end the, you know, the day before your birthday. The So mine is January 13th, so my... um year ends January 12th. Okay. So my personal year ends January 12th and it'll be different for everyone. Okay. Because your birthdays are different. The only time that it will be the same or you will have similar energies is if your birthday and someone else's birthday are, um, around the same time frame. So I have a friend whose birthday is the day after mine. So I know that we experience at least similar energies every, you know, throughout our lives because my birthday is the day before. And therefore, I can kind of relate a little bit more to the experiences that my friend has because I already, I deal with that same energy at the same time, right? Um, but so your birthday starts a new year for you specifically, and it starts your 52 day period or cycle of your Mercury cycle. Now, every cycle, every 52 days is ruled by a different planet. Okay. And you got to think about what that planet does. All right. So Mercury is one of the fastest moving planets in the solar system other than the moon. And so things that happen in a Mercury period are usually surrounded by thought, the way we speak, our relationships to our siblings. Um, and they happen very quickly. You know, you could find yourself during a Mercury period uh communicating a lot with other people, being out and about, developing new relationships or communicate, you know, talking on the phone, things like that, right? Celebrating your birthday. Um, and as far as love is concerned, if you start dating someone, okay, during a Mercury period, it is usually a period where things happen very quickly. There's a lot of communication, a lot of flirtation back and forth, but things end also equally as quickly as they began, if not quicker. Okay. So for example, um, one time I met a guy and we started dating on my birthday. Like literally he took me out for our first date on my birthday. Um, and I knew because I know the cards, uh, and this was years ago, but I knew that I knew what it was, but things happen very fast and sure as shit, they ended just as fast, you know? Um, but usually after the 52 day cycle or 52 day period, maybe it'll go into your Venus period, but after Venus, as soon as Mars hits, finito, okay? Now, and that's not all the time. I don't want to guarantee you that that's all the time because a lot of times somebody can come in during your Mercury period and they can stay for a long period of time. But usually when they leave, they leave unexpectedly or they leave very quickly. And it's, you know, something that, maybe a little bit um, where you're like, wow, I didn't expect that or anticipate that to happen, right? So keep that in mind if you're dating during a Mercury period. It's also the same for marriage. So 
I would never recommend somebody to get married during a Mercury period. And that is your Mercury period and your partner's. So if you are thinking about getting married and you're trying to pick out dates and you want your marriage to last, look at your chart, look at your partner's chart and pick a date that is either within one of, you know, that's within one of these good periods that I'm about to explain to you that will give you uh, the highest opportunity for a long lasting love and committed partnership. Okay. Uh, but Mercury is not one of them. Usually if you get married during your Mercury period or your partner's Mercury period, their relationship will eventually, you know, you come together because you have commonality, but then you end up, it dwindles out as things change, you know, as the the seasons or the periods change, okay? So after your first 52-day Mercury period, you, ha you go into your Venus period. Venus period, you got to think about what Venus rules. Venus is the planet of love. It is the planet of beauty. Um, it also money, right? Um, but this is a great time to fall in love. If you meet someone during this period, uh, if you... Um, if you wanted to get married during this period, this is an amazing time to do that, okay? Because it is your Venus period. So, and Venus being that planet of love and external beauty, it can definitely bring a lot of options available to you where people are, this is a time where you might be more physically attracted, more... Um, in tune with like what you look like externally and making yourself more beautiful. You could d find yourself deciding that you want to go get your hair done and your nails done and you want to look nice and make yourself feel good and get out and, you know, go on a date or two or what have you. Um, this is maybe a time when you want to decide you want to lose weight, whatever. Okay. But you doing these things may attract people to you that are interested in you because you are now physically the most appealing um, during this period, okay? Now, your next period lasts for 52 days and it is your Mars period, okay? Mars is the planet of passion, but it's also the planet of war. Now, for those of you in relationships, during this period, this could be a time where either you're finding yourself having very passionate relationship with this person or you're fighting a lot, like fighting, arguing, all of that because Mars, you know, is the planet of war. So you want to be very careful with this energy. This is a great time, especially in relationships, to be competitive with each other, like Friendly competition, going to the gym together, working out, hiking, doing things where you are physically active, having sex. Like these are things that you do naturally during a Mars period where you're going to want to do more of those things, especially if you're in a relationship, because you want to manifest the most positive, you know, manifest this energy as the most positive way as you can. And that is the best way to handle that energy. Now, for those of you that are single, um, you could find yourself uh, having a lot of sex during this period of time. You could find yourself more physically active or um, more physical just in general, like uh, find yourself even more irritable, especially with the opposite sex, okay? So you want to be careful of that energy for those 52 days during that, that period of time, all right? Now, after that, we go into our Jupiter period, okay? Jupiter, I actually love this because this is, Jupiter is the planet of luck, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system next to the sun. 
and it is the planet of expansion. So Jupiter brings in a lot of luck. It has a strong spiritual overtone to it. Um, during this period of time, you could find yourself, if you get into a relationship or you get married during this period, this would be a time in your life where things are financially really good. You know, if you get married during this time, this is an indication that your marriage would have a strong financial overtone um, to it, that together you guys could be like the Jay-Z and Beyonce of things or have really good uh, luck. You know, um, if you get into a relationship with someone during this period or you start dating during this period, you could have luck during this period. You know, um, you may also find yourself dealing with someone that, especially if you're a feminine energy, uh, you may find yourself dealing with someone who is well off financially or is wanting to give to you, you know, wanting to bless you with things, uh, take you pl nice places that you enjoy, uh, at their expense, things like that, you know, as far as relationships are concerned. Business partnerships, this is an amazing, amazing time to open businesses, especially if you have a partner or something. Um, it, if you have goals that you want to achieve, this is an incredible energy for getting financial backing, all of that during a Jupiter period, okay? Your next 52 day period will begin. Um, and that will be your Saturn period. Okay. Now I had put this, excuse me, this, uh, screen up and I was supposed to be like showing you guys what I'm talking about. So you can see this is my, uh, yearly cardiology report or well, not report, but this is my yearly cardiology spreads. My birth spread is here, uh, and then this is my planetary ruling spread here. And if you look, this is my my Mars, or I'm sorry, my Mercury period, and I'm in this right now, okay? There's that Venus period right here. This is my Mars period and the Jupiter period. Now, looking at Saturn, the Saturn period is a period of time where we feel very restricted. It is usually really difficult to deal with the Saturn period. This is a time where you could be dealing with sickness or um, you could feel depressed. You could feel like, you know, you have a weight on your shoulders. Getting into a relationship during this period is usually going to be very burdensome to you. It will be like carrying a thousand pounds on your back the entire time you are together, okay? It, getting married during a Saturn period, whether it's yours or your partner's, will indicate that there is a lot of struggle in this relationship and it may eventually result in it coming to an end, all right? So Saturn is not a good influence for marriage and uh, or for getting married. I would not suggest getting married if you can avoid it or getting into a relationship during a Saturn period, okay? Now then we go into, after the Saturn period, we go into the Uranus period for 52 days. Uranus um, is the planet of rebellion. This is the planet of surprise, right? So this is a time especially because it comes after the Saturn period. If you are in a relationship and during the Saturn period, you feel like things are going haywire and the relationship is just not, you know, it's a struggle. The Uranus period is the period that brings the breakup, okay? Um, it brings the, Uranus wants its space. You know, it wants you, it wants to be friends, but it wants to go over here you know, and like be friends at a distance type of thing. So during this period, you could find that there are surprise changes that happen. Um, there are things in your life that, you know, relationships, 
may, there could even be relationships that come into your life surprisingly during this period. And if they do, there is, there is possibly some element of spiritual or karmic sort of connection there. Um, this is, I wouldn't say that it's a great time to get into a relationship or to be married. Usually this is a period of isolation or needing to be more by yourself. And if you do get into a relationship during this period, it's one that you guys are friends first or have at least like a solid foundation of friendship. This is going to be something that it may be more adventurous for you, you know? Um, so just be ready for the unexpected if you get into a relationship or marriage in this period. Now, your next 52-day period is the Neptune period, okay? And Neptune is, it's tricky because with the Neptune period, a lot of times we find ourselves dating during the Neptune period, right? There's interest in us and we find ourselves interested in other people during this time. But what ends up happening is when we get into relationships during a Neptune period, we place where Neptune makes you not see things clearly, okay? I always say that when Neptune is present, You've got to let, it's like having a blindfold on your face, you know, on your eyes and then somebody turning you a hundred times and you have no idea like what direction you're going in. You just kind of have to feel your way around. So it's one of those things where you could definitely not be seeing things clearly during this period. Okay. And so getting into a relationship with someone during your Neptune period Regardless of how long it lasts, usually you end up placing your fantasies on the other person or they're doing this to you. And then when you come out of the Neptune period, you realize that that person is not who you thought they were. You know, they have secrets. They, you know, are liars. They have hidden things from you or you just ignored all the red flags that they were showing you, okay? Now, let me explain some things, some extra little tidbits about this these energies, right? So if you are ruled by Mercury or ruled by any of these planets, so let's say uh, you're Virgo. Virgos do very well during their Venus period, or I'm sorry, during their Mercury period because well, Venus too, or I'm sorry, uh, but Virgos do very well during their Mercury period. It's their ruling planet. So even if Mercury in astrology is in retrograde, which it is right now, and I'm in my Mercury period and I'm feeling every bit of it, um, if I was a Virgo, this would wouldn't. I would breeze through this energy, okay? Now, if Taurus and Libra do very well during the Venus period, you know, um, Taurus and Libra, that's their ruling planet. So they experience whatever it is, that energy that's playing out much better than anyone else. Now, me being a Capricorn uh, sun sign, and anyone who is a Capricorn, Saturn, the toughest uh, period of time, is usually not as bad for Capricorns and Aquariuses, only because uh, Saturn is the original ruler of Aquarius in Western astrology, right? So Capricorns and Aquariuses usually deal with even the toughest Saturn energy, pretty okay. Like it doesn't affect them as bad as it would like, let's say a Gemini. Okay. So, um, during that period. All right. Now they, depending on different things having to do with your birth chart, 
you may have more difficulty. Like, let's say for me, uh, I usually have more difficulty during a Mars period. You know, Mars and Uranus are sort of the periods for me that I'm like, oh, it drives me up the wall. Um, and I would say Mercury too. I, I don't know. It just is what it is. But a lot of that does have to do with, and it, the love portion of it plays out the way I, I just explained, but then there are other factors. So it could be like other things having to do with your life, you know, um, having to do with your family. And a lot of my, uh, situations with Ma or with Mercury does have to do with like my siblings and things like that. So I see that playing out during my Mercury period. All right. One of the things additionally, I want to let you guys know is that during each period, you could attract people to you that present each of these planetary energies. So let's say, for example, you're in your Venus position, you know, you're in your Venus period. Um, you could attract people that are Taurus and Libra energies or wherever Venus is at in the chart at that time um, in astrology, like let's say Venus is in Gemini, right? So you could be attracting Gemini's sun, moon, uh, rising signs into your life during that period as well. So keep that in mind. So like if you're in your Saturn period, you could be dealing with a lot, you know, Capricorn energy or Aquarius energy, sun, moon, rising or Venus that could, br you know, it could bring about someone into your life that, um, has that energy in their natal chart. Okay. So that is another way to sort of look, you know, something to pay attention to and look for in your relationships. Okay. So just keep that little gem in mind when you're going through each period. And the best way to figure out if something is really, really good and like meant to be, and it has strong potential for long-term success is to figure out what period your partner is or the person that you like and what period you're in. So what period they're in and what period you're in, and then figure out, okay, is this person in a Saturn period in their life? Like, are they going through a lot of restriction difficulties, uh, depression, possibly, you know, things like that. Or are they also, you know, in a Venus or, you know, another potentially good position. Now, if you see somebody in a Neptune position trying to come towards you, remember what I said, that they could place their false fantasies on you, which would eventually cause you to feel restricted uh, at some point and maybe something that you end up, you know, uh, pushing away from you anyway. All right. All right, guys, I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was, let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like to know more about this, if you want me to go in more detail or if you wish I would never dig cardology at all or whatever. I don't know. So let me know. Um, and if you'd like something personal just for you, I do have cardology readings, cardology reports, and tarot readings and all kind of fun stuff available on my website, lucky7tarot.com. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me and tuning into my channel. I appreciate all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Um, and I ask that you please like this video uh, if you thought that it was helpful for you. Um, it does help to support my channel and I definitely appreciate that. So, all right, guys, I wish you all the very best. Peace, love, and blessings to you always. Until next time. Bye-bye.